Hello and welcome to Popcorn 1010's Noob Shop tutorial. Um, in this one, I think I'm going to pretty much just do one where I show you how to choose colors for shading and lights because apparently people think that you shade with black and that you light with white. No. Okay, so let's go to File, New. We'll just keep it at default 7 by 5 inches because that doesn't matter. Okay. And you never really want to work on your background layer um, ever. So always, always, always make a new layer whenever you start anything new. Anything. Just always make a new layer. And that's a little bitty, pa little paper looking thing that on right here that looks like it's page getting turned. And just click it and you already have a new layer. See, it's called layer one. How neat. Okay. So I'm grabbing my brush tool and oh my god, this is huge. Let's make this smaller and a harder size. Okay. So I'm just going to do some random colors. Let's do a red. Purplish, violet, blue, whatever. Let's do a green. And let's do a yellow because apparently people have trouble with lighting yellow and shading it. Okay. So now you have your pretty colors. Oh my god, you're an artist now. Sweet. Um, right here, um, right above your layer where it says lock, and it has this little checkered looking picture, click that. It's very important. That is the trans, the lock transparency button that is pretty much God right now. And um, see, different layer, you can see. What, that, what does that do? Um, well, let's take, let's change my color to black. And um, let me just swipe through this. Oh my god, you guys, look what just happened. It didn't go on the white. Yep, so pretty much it knows wherever you drew, and if you press the little lock transparency button, you're only able to color in the areas you drew. This is, you drew in, I suppose. And this is extremely helpful when doing like, um, an anime picture, for example, and you want to color the hair and color the skin. You don't want the hair and the skin to be on the same layer, you want the hair to be on a separate layer, so when shading and highlighting it, it's not screwing up the skin at all. Unless you're minimalist and you want to use one layer, but then you're just retarded. Okay. How to shade these colors? Well, first go to the eyedropper tool and we'll shade each one individually. So let's go red first. I clicked it. Eyedropper, you know, it takes the color. You should know this by now. So now let's click our color to edit. Um, you can always just pretty much just choose a darker color. Don't choose too dark or too not dark. Um, my, I didn't choose that good of a color because normally you probably want to go more bottom right than just bottom, but whatever. Um, okay, let's press OK. So now you can see this is darker red, and you can see that this is like shading the thing. But in this tutorial, I'm going to do a gradient shading because apparently people don't understand how that works. So we're going to go to the lasso tool, which looks like, oh my god, a lasso. All right. And um, you're just going to select where you want to shade. Now, people always ask me, how do you know where to shade? Um, sometimes I'm just like, let's just pretend that it's right here, the sun. Okay, so uh, the sun's just gonna be in this direction. Let me just draw that out so you're not, so you don't completely freak out and spaz. Okay. Here is our sun. And what does that mean? Our lights will come from the upper direction. Look, I even wrote it out for you. Okay, so that's our sun. So what we're gonna do is we will obviously, if the sun's there, you're not going to shade it from this direction because that would be just retarded. I, I don't know what sun you're thinking about. Okay, so grab your lasso tool and select the areas that you want to shade. Now, because this is a not a exactly straight object, you don't just go like this and like I'm shading this area. Yeah, because I can because that looks retarded and it gives the actual image no shape. And I don't even know what you're thinking if you do that. Okay, so just go by the curves, and this one you're just gonna have to kind of eye it. There is no like real way to know, you just kind of do. I don't know. And gradient shading is, well normally people, if they just do cell shading, and what cell shading is, is if you select it like this, or if it's drawn on, but it's pretty much where you just get the paint bucket tool after selecting something, and you just click it and then go to deselect, and it's just one color. And that's the only color that you pretty much use for the cell shading. There's no softness to it, it's hard 
color, yeah. Which looks really good with certain pictures and certain images, like right for your example, it looks okay, so I'll just keep it like that. And to light, let's do the eyedropper tool again, this time on the base color. Base colors are not lighted or shaded, it's just the average color that you choose. And um, instead of, what you do is you don't just go up for shades, try to go to up left. Up left seems to be a good, decent area to go to. So whenever lighting, try to go to the top left and not just top when choosing colors. And let's just select our light areas. Now an image doesn't necessarily need light, um, it needs shading. Apparently shading makes an image look complete and lighting just gives it more justice. And that would be like, I guess lighting this little blob right here. And for the blue, now we're on to the blue. Let's eye drop the blue, now you're a blue color. Um, let's go down for our shades. This one, I'll show you how to um, gradient shade. Now you did the exact same thing you did before. You just select whatever area that you wanted. Oh my God, you're selecting right now. It looks like ice cream slash crap. And instead of using paint bucket, use the gradient tool. And let's change your opacity to like, 34 around there, whatever you want, just play with it and yeah, just screw around with it. And pretty much it's just a drag and drop and it gets darker as you can see, but not the entire image. Now I like to play with this on maybe I only want it dark in one area and lighter on the top, or maybe I want it dark in both areas but really light in the middle. Just screw around with it and try it out. Let's deselect and see how that looks. See how it looks a little bit different than the red one. You can see that it's lighter in the middle. And let's do that with the lights as well. Remember, top left and not just top. Okay. Lasso tool is amazing. And you can see that it's really light on top, but not so light on the bottom because of the sun not hitting it as much. And that's the difference between cell shading and gradient shading. Now let's do airbrushing for the green one. Now for here, I drop your green, and your brush, instead of choosing the regular brush that you would, choose a softer brush. Um, they probably have pre-selected brushes for you, so I'll just use those. But you can just simply change it by changing the hardness. So um, you guessed it, 100% hardness means it's really hard, uh -huh, that's what she said. And 0% hardness is really soft like an airbrush. All right, awesome work on guessing. Okay, now let's just go all the way down for this one. And because the sun is more on the left than it was because the first two was more on the right, where the shading is now going to be on the left. Oh, oops, okay, that doesn't make sense. And pretty much this time you just draw it out. So you just draw wherever it could be. And this is how it really looks like poop because it's all soft and stuff. Yay, squishy. Okay, now you have shading for that. Let's do the exact same thing with the lights. Remember it being on the left side because of the sun being on the left side. And put more shades on the top than you would on the bottom. And that's how um, airbrushing is. I'm not so much a fan of airbrushing. Um, it's it's every really any style is good for certain images. It just depends on the style that you're going for. And finally, yellow. This one I will show you how to um, like blurish shade. I don't exactly know what it's called, but it's kind of like painting, but not necessarily. Um, this is a certain brush that has a. I can't explain it. Let me just choose black so you can see. Instead of it just drawing completely hard on straight like this, it draws like this. And it's like weird and it depends on how hard you hold. Like, so it's, it's like, instead of it being smaller as you lose pressure on the, it, on the um, pen, because the tablet, if you don't put that much pressure on the, on the pen, um, the actual line itself is thinner. And when you put more pressure, it's thicker, kind of like it would be with the pen. Well, with this um, actual brush, there is no sensitivity on the width, the, how small it is. It's the harder you press on, the more thicker it comes on. So this is me pressing on really thick, and this is me pressing on really light. You can see the difference. I'll be showing you how to shade with that. And yellow, I know a lot of people hate um, shading with yellow because it gets you this really ugly, mustardy color, unless that's what you're going for and that's not really a pretty color. So I would recommend you um, actually shading with an orange. It makes the yellow more pop out a little bit, I would like to say. It definitely pops out a lot better and it's prettier and it looks a lot neater. I'm making my brush around 19 size for this and my opacity is like 35. For this certain brush, like I said, that's kind of like, I can't, I don't even know what this brush is called. 
I never had the opacity at 100, only with certain images. So at this point, I'll just manually put it on. And this is the way a lot of people do it. They just normally choose a regular brush and change the opacity to less than 100, which opacity is how much color is on with each brush, kind of like diluting the um, thing. So I guess for you traditional artists out there, opacity is pretty much just like, imagine yourself painting. Opacity 100% is you just dipping your paintbrush in the um, paint, while opacity like 30% or anything less than 100, you're like diluting it with water. So, um, or diluting whenever you like to say it with water. And that's how I pretty much would shade yellow with this little tool right here, a little bit more. And let's eye drop our yellow and go for like a really white beige color, almost closer to whiter than anything because yellow, it's harder to tell by your highlights. And let's just put that in certain areas. Everything really is just eye, like you just have to eye where the shading goes. A lot of people are always like, I need a shading tutorial. It's, it's really, it's not that it's complicated, it's just you just kind of know. You just look at the shape and be like, okay, I think this would fold here, crease with here, and yeah. So these are just four ways of shading, you know. You have your cell shading, gradient, airbrush, and doohickey. I don't know what it's called, but let's just call it that. Um, and then now let's go to the um, dodge tool. And let's see, what, okay. And with dodge, it makes your images lighter. Now, don't necessarily use this for shading. And you can be like, oh cool, I found a shortcut. I don't even have to choose my colors, I'll just dodge and burn my images for shading. No, it's called dodge and burn rape. Everyone rapes dodge and burn. I would use this if I really, really want something to seem shiny, and um, let's just make all these images shiny just because we can. So what you do is you just grab your dodge tool and change the exposure to whatever you want. I'll change my exposure to 30%. And you just click on areas that you want it to be really lighter than the rest. And you can see that it the way it shades, like, I wouldn't recommend shading or, I mean, lighting skin with this because it makes it really, really shiny and it doesn't look like skin. It looks more like metallic, like I said in my previous little noob shop thing. So because these things are just blobs and they don't necessarily have shape or form or you don't know what they are, it's okay to do this. Let's do that with the blue as well. So you can see the difference of colors. With red, it's kind of weird to do it with red, but I really like it with blues and grays because for blues it turns like to this really pretty violety color and um, it, it just makes it look like a ruby or sapphire or something. Uh, ruby is red, sapphire is blue. I play Pokemon, I know the difference. Okay, um, that didn't look too good. Let's undo that for a second. But um, pretty much I would just suggest that um, you would only use this method for metallics and uh, gems, stones, jewels, anything that you really want to be shiny. Glass, that would be the only reason for you to pretty much use this tool. Other than that, you're kind of abusing it. Unless you just want to mess with, you know, effects and stuff. Because it, it does give some pretty neat effects for, like, if I'm doing a monster and I want to uh, shade and color its gums, I choose the original colors I wanted, and then I do dodge and burn, and because this seems to make something look wettish because it's so shiny. It's really good to use on skin, just a little bit on skin if they're coming out of water or something like that. Now I'm finished dodging, my dodging is lighting, now let's go to the burn tool and do the exact same thing, but this time where the shades would be. And um, if you shade a picture with just one color, it looks okay, but the more shades you put in, the more depth the picture has. So if you ever see a picture and you're kind of satisfied with it, don't be afraid to add a few um, highlights, a few more highlights here and there because most likely it'll look even better even though you didn't necessarily need it. It will just look better on its own. Okay. See with the yellow it gives that ugly color I was talking about when you're using the burn tool which isn't necessarily good but it does show more depth with the image so you can see where the shadows are. Especially with the sun being directly over it to the left it'll reproduce more shadows. Okay. Let's a little bit more here, make it look more. And this is really crappy really fast, but this basically shows you the difference of colors and methods of shading lighting. So um, this is pretty much just noob shop. Um, I'm not as mean as I was in the other one. I messed up. I should have been a lot more meaner. But yep, 
So you have, so let's just end this in a closed real fast. Cell shading is when you have one color and you shade it with another color and there is no airbrush or gradient to it. It's just hard on color with another color. Gradient is when you select the area and you shade it with a gradient tool, which is like gradually increases to darker light. It's not just a hard on color. It changes a little bit. Airbrushing is just really, really soft color. It's not a hard brush tool. It's just really soft. It gives a light effect kind of heaven-ish while this painterly effect gives something a more realistic thing and really the effect is good for just certain images. So this is Popcorn 1010. I hope you found my tutorial at least somewhat useful and um, I'll probably come back more with different tutorials and um, it's a see ya.